all right so today i have miss ice the one and she's a upcoming artist producer um you uh did you say what oh i messed up what's the other one you said you said artist producer you say you yeah just a lover of the arts yeah artist um producer writer singer mc you know what I'm saying? Um, visual artist as well. So, yeah, man, just a lover of the arts. You know what I'm saying? Yes, man. Creative in general, you know? For real. You said you called it multi. Did you say multi? Yeah, like a multi. I guess you say multidisciplinary. Multidisciplinary. That's the word. I'm sorry. That's the word I was looking for. She's a multidisciplinary. Did I say it right? For sure. All right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, this is Miss Ice the One, y'all. And if y'all don't know, y'all gonna know she's straight from Canada, man. And, hey, she doing her thing right now. But, yeah, Miss <laughs> Ice the One, I would like to tell you thank you so much for coming on my show. All right. So, Miss Ice the One, my first question for you is what are your upcoming plans for 2021? Yeah. So, for 2021, um, just a lot of music. Um, first and foremost, uh, just dropping a lot of singles. Um, I got the album Monster uh, dropping in the upcoming months, so that'll full album, ten tracks. Um, we've dropped a few singles off of that so far. So Hold You Down was the first one, and then it was uh, Go Go, and then we're about to drop FYF this Friday, uh, January twenty second. And then a couple more singles to the full tape. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really, like, the focus for right now. And then visuals, of course, to go along with the, with the singles. Dropping a lot of collabs, some, in the, some with homies in the States, Europe. So just really just a lot of good music on the way. Um, and then I'm also probably going to drop a project later on in the year as well, uh, probably around September, another album. So, yeah, man, just... You know, staying on the hustle, staying on the grind. That's what's up. That's what's up. Miss Ice the One, man, that's cool. She said they don't drop about three or four so far uh, recently. And they're also about to drop a tape with 10 tracks on it. I can't wait for that. Um, Do you know what? Uh, Do you you ever listen to uh, music Chopped and Screwed or Slowed yeah. Down? Yeah. For sure. All right. So do y'all have any of y'all stuff slowed? No, nah, but we should for real. I was just talking to <laughs> talking to my boy about that. He did the production on the tape. Hey Bombay, he's like my brother. But we were saying, yeah, we should get some remixes for the singles. For like, real. Some of them screwed and chopped because that would be a vibe. For real. Sure. All right, so shoot, I got another channel for my fellas who rap. Uh, is it's slowed everything. Like it ain't chop. I can't do it chop like that. But I slow it down. It sound alright. Like I. <laughs> for real, all right. we're gonna talk about that later though. But yeah, um, for real, Miss Ice, the one I got you out. Hey, that ain't no problem. Yeah, let's do it. For yeah, real, let's do it. but um, yeah, all right. So you say y'all about to start having visuals out. Um, do do y'all have out any out yet, or are you just plan on doing some? If yeah, we put out like a few like small like video like teasers and stuff for now. Um, and then my. Uh, one of my co-creators, uh, shout out Chris Ack, he's working on like the CGI uh, blender stuff. So it's going to be some CG CGI visuals to go with the singles and it kind of tells a story. Um, and the next two singles is, is going to be uh, First Time and then Albany and then the tape. So yeah, it's going to be some definitely some outside the box visuals, you know what I'm saying? We want to switch it up and kind of incorporate um, just some something different for this tape so and with every you know with every project with every body of work it's like an evolution of of your craft you know yes so. ma'am all right so miss ice the one my next question for you is are there any shout outs that you would like to make to your friends or to your family uh yeah so shout out shout out the squad you know um especially for this this upcoming record, Octavio Santos. Uh, we did a lot of the trumpet work. Um, Anthony Rinaldi, saxophone, dope saxophone player from Toronto. Uh, Fresh Kills, who's my bestie, uh, who did the mix. Mariana uh, Hutton, who mastered it, uh, also a homie of mine. And Chris Ack, who's doing the visuals. Um, that's a co-collaborator of mine. 
pretty much we've done all my most of my videos uh to this day um yeah and hey bombay who also produced the joints on the tape uh so yeah man it's 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 always um you know squad ting shout out juni t like that's what it is it's like i'm blessed to have a circle around me that we've built like a lot of us are kind of day ones and it's just like people who inspire you you know and also push you out of your comfort zone and you know what i'm saying like challenge you to be to be your best self so shout out <laughs> shout out to, to all the real ones you know for real man i can't name all of them because it's a lot shout out to all y'all that she just yeah, said it's a lot. exactly it's a long list for real anything that's helping miss ice the one along the way man hey shout out to all y'all dog um so miss ice the one my next question for you is okay if there are okay what are some things that you found out in the music uh industry later on that you wish people would have told you when you first started out I feel like it's more so the the business side of it, the back end side. And I feel like part of it, people didn't tell me because I didn't have anyone who knew or who had done it in that type of a way. And I think some of the older heads that I did know, you know, part of them because of the landscape of Canada and Toronto, you know, some of them had that kind of scarcity mindset. So they weren't necessarily open to really sharing certain things or knowledge, um, which is why I'm super kind of like mindful of, of doing that now with, with our younger people coming up. Um, Cause I feel it's vital to like teach each other and share with each other and, and you know, and pull each other up with us. Um, but really just the back end stuff, stuff that, you know, we didn't necessarily learn about just financial ends of things or even just like copyright and uh, you know what I'm saying? Like splits and just like basic things that would have been helpful <laughs> in the beginning that we've had to just learn by trial and error. Um, but that would be something I would say for any artist, any, whatever your craft is, like just knowing the back end because it covers you you know what I'm saying moving forward just having all your having all your paperwork straight and those things like can really mean can really do a lot for you in the long run so I would say just always educate yourself like I'm, I'm always still learning you know yes ma'am yes ma'am um <clears throat> all right so my next question for you is, <clears throat> is are there any artists that you would like to work with in the future um yeah i mean i feel like i feel like i i mean i'm a i'm a lover of all types of music to be honest like i grew up listening to a lot of different music even now i listen to so many different genres um i mean in my heart of hearts the people i would love to collaborate are no longer here <laughs> r.i.p like For real. the jazz greats that i grew up with billy holiday l fitzgerald like Louis Armstrong, all those people that, you know, like to this day, I'm like, man, Janis Joplin, like, but, you know, moving forward, um, I really just, to me, it's kind of like when I have a, when I, it's like when you meet someone, if you have a vibe, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, you feel like your styles of music would maybe work well together, even just like personality wise. Um, but yeah, like lately I've been listening to, I've been listening to Kalani a lot, um, you know what I'm saying? And just like, just really, it's kind of like a, I guess I have a super diverse, I was, I would say a range of just like things that I'm drawn to um, as far as music. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, we'll see what the future holds, you know what I'm saying? But I'm always, I feel like collaborating is, is always a good thing because it's just, even for me, past collaborations I've done with, with people in Europe or the States, it's like that cross pollination is always good for both people. And also if you're, if you're on the same page, like even just mentally and even, even as far as the overall vibe that you're kind of trying to accomplish from the music, I feel like it can really be beneficial for both people and just bridge gaps too, that you, that may have ne not necessarily have happened 
if those collaborations didn't take place you know yes ma'am yes ma'am i agree um are there any producers that you or beat makers that you would like to work with in the future um uh, i mean ninth wonder has always been <laughs> you already know y'all from here y'all know about that uh ninth man and timbo of course i grew up listening to a lot of timbo and man and missy <laughs> Jeez. You said Missy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Missy, growing up, Missy, Missy, Mary J. Blige, you know, that, like I grew up on those two for sure, TLC, like, but obviously Timbo did a lot of Missy's production, you know, so that was, that was always, and then Ninth, Rhapsody, the Ninth, you know. Um. Yeah, I feel like and I mean, there's there's a lot of young producers coming up now too that um, that are doing big things as well. But for me, it'd be, I feel like it'd be cool to just like get on that nostalgic, you know what I'm saying? Collab with the producers that I I listened to growing up. It'd be kind of like full circle, you know. I think that's cool. I think that's cool. Um, <laughs> said Timbo and Missy. I was not <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Um, all right, so my next question for you is whenever you okay, do you have to go to a studio or do you have your own recording software at your house? Yeah, I have I have a setup at my house, but there's a couple of studios I go to as well, um, locally and it's I feel like now it's you know, if you didn't have a setup before, most people are, have one now or they're trying to just because of this pandemic madness. When you know things are open, things are not. Studios open, studios not. So it's like having a setup at the crib. I feel like is super important, especially in these times. You know. I agree. I agree. Like I try to encourage all artists to get their own suit. Hey, that's cool though. It's good. You got a studio. You can go whenever you want. But hey, three, four o'clock in the morning, you can make a song if you need to. That's cool. I like that's that. That's what it is. Yeah, and I'd be. I mean, I, yeah, that's me. I'm always on some crazy hours. My Aquarius ass be doing all type of crazy hours. So yeah, I've always had. I've had a setup for a long time. I mean, and to be honest, now with technology, you don't really need that much. Like years ago, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot harder to have your own studio in the crib. But now, I feel like it's super accessible, to be honest, you know? Like, so, I, yeah, I encourage that too, like, to a lot of artists. Like, you don't need a lot. You really don't. And there's a lot of free programs too that you can, you know, a lot of DAWs that are free and accessible. So, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, Miss Ice the One, my next question for you is if nobody has ever heard any of your music before, what are three songs that you recommend them listening to? Mm. I would say for my last project, I would say uh Shy Town. Shy Town was a classic off that last tape, uh my last album in the paint. Um Shy Town was like a favorite. Uh, and Full Time Lover is a favorite off of that one for a lot of people. I feel like that's a balance of, kind of gives a little balance of the rap into the singing. Uh, recently, Go Go is a, a, one of the singles off the new tape, but it's definitely a vibe. I feel like right now, especially in these COVID times, <laughs> a little a little turn up, feel good vibe. Uh, and me and Bombay just dropped a Lucy called The Morning, which is kind of like a grown and sexy quarantine so that's another one <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up <clears throat> man that's cool that's cool all right so miss ice the one are you originally from canada or did you move there yeah i was born originally in the east coast of canada in a place called newfoundland which is an island off of canada in the northeast atlantic um and i moved here when i was young and basically been in Toronto on the east side ever since. But my family is, is a mixture of like Nordic and also um, Italian. So my family came here after World War II um, through Halifax. So yeah, it's like, it's definitely, there's definitely a good amount of Italians in Toronto for sure. <laughs> we have 
I mean, Toronto's a melting pot, but it, people from everywhere. But my yeah, my 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 descendants is yeah, Italian, Scandinavian. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, my next question for you. Okay, you say you was born on an island out a little bit off the coast of Canada. Um, uh, okay. Do you visit any, do you visit often back home? I actually got a chance to go back this summer, which was the first time in, you know, in a minute in years. And it was really dope. I got, I got to go back to, uh, my family's actually from an island off of an island, which is called Bell Island, which is a small, which is a smaller island off of Newfoundland. Um, and I got to go there and like visit my family has a plot there with like you know everyone's buried there from that side of my family so i got to just pay respects to my nan's uh grave which i i hadn't been back uh since the funeral which was years ago so and she was someone you know who was super instrumental in my life and just inspired a lot of my my music and writing so that was dope and just the landscape in general is really breathtaking like it's it's rough in the winter so to visit it in the summer was a was really it was a blessing because it's just it's like raw really untouched nature it's just you know the ocean sweeping like mountains and cliffs and it's just yeah it's i definitely want to go back and shoot you know shoot a video do some things there um but i guess that's just that you know Part of it was to go back and handle family business, but the other half of it uh, was just kind of reconnecting, yeah, to my roots a little bit, which I'm definitely grateful for because it had been years. It's a hard place to get to. It's not the most accessible. You got, you know, it's it's a tr it's a long journey, but it's uh, it was definitely worth it. So yeah, I have plans to hopefully go back this summer or just make it a regular thing, you know, because I feel like it's important for all of us to connect to where we come from and you know where our ancestors you know originated and just like our own i feel like digging up your own history helps you understand parts of yourself sometimes you know absolutely absolutely um my next question for you is well no um, did you take any pictures while you were there oh yeah <laughs> yeah i um, took lots of pictures and videos yeah can you yeah. please show me some pictures after this? I would love to see that. I've never heard of that place before, ever. Yeah, it's crazy. A lot of people who live in Canada have never heard of it, but it's part of Canada. But we Dang. were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So, are there? I'm not sure. Is it like a? Is it a big island? If you don't mind me asking. Um, uh, Newfoundland is like, uh, it's. It's fairly big. Uh, yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, Bell Island is small. There's a few islands off of it that are a lot smaller, but the island itself is pretty big. Like to drive across it is is about 10, 12 hours. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty big. And to drive across it the other way is probably 15 hours. So it's definitely a trek, like for sure. Oh, yeah. but it's, it's one of those places that is is kind of it's kind of got a similar vibe to like Greenland or Iceland, like that type of, um, you know what I'm saying? Like really, it's 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 a type of nature that's just kind of wild, you know. A lot of it's untouched. I was about to like, say that too. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it's untouched, <laughs> which I really like. I like places that are still just like left as they were, like not you know developed or you know, taken apart by capitalism, so. For real, I think that's cool, man. That's cool. I bet it's some creatures out there that no, nobody even know about, like. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's a harsh climate. Um, You know, it's, it's very cold in the winter and it snows a lot. Uh, But as far as, like, the ocean, there's, you know, there's whales, there's all type of, like, see animals and creatures that you don't always see in other places that you get to see like the whales jumping up you know at certain what? Times in seasons yeah you get to see some really amazing things that's it's, crazy it's close it's north it's way north so it's like they have you know the migration patterns but yeah to see it's that type of nature to see like that type of just beauty 
is is wild. Like it's, there's nothing like it. It makes you it humbles your it's humbling because you're like dang, you know, and it makes you respect, you know, just living beings and the land, you know, in a different way. That's cool. That's cool. Um, man, I think that's so cool. Like, <laughs> all right. So my okay. Did you uh, get to interact? with any artists from out there um i have uh some friends in halifax which is like another place is also on the east coast where some of my family's from um so their uh uncle fester's uh a friend out there who i got to pop in on he he's a producer as well um there's a few people out there my cousins uh she's a poet and a writer as well um shannon webb campbell uh ghetto socks there's a bunch of there's a bunch of artists out there in, in Halifax that have been on their grind for a long time. Um, so, I mean, it was it was tricky this time because of COVID. It wasn't the usual how it would be, like doing shows or just like in the studio with certain people. Some people, you know, some individuals are more paranoid of, of, of COVID than others. So it was kind of right. person by person basis. Um, but yeah, trying to be safe, of course, through the whole thing. But Th- this trip was definitely more of a just like connect with family than than being on the road because a lot of times in the past I I've been in cities for shows or doing or doing whatever and you don't really get the time to to spend with your family that quality time you know and um, you know as the family grows and people have kids and it's just like it's nice to see everyone's kids and just catch up and you know do the anti vibes and. <laughs> For real, man, that's cool. That's cool, man. Please be safe out there during the summer. I know it's summertime, but still, be safe out there. I know island weather get crazy. Like any time, something could happen. It's normal. Yeah, like, that's facts. <laughs> that's facts. Yeah. Man, all right. So that's cool. That's that's real cool. Um, Miss Ice Storm. My next question for you is. Um, what's your zodiac sign? I'm Aquarius. Um, what do they say about Aquariuses? <laughs> I mean, Aquarius. My birthday's February 6th. Same as Bob Marley. Shout out. R.I.P. Bob Marley, the legend. Um, I feel like we're just pretty, in general, we're pretty chill people um, down to earth. Uh, we're, we're very, I feel like, social people at times um and and a lot of i feel like a lot of us are creative i don't know a lot of aquariuses but the ones that i do know are are usually pretty creative outside the box thinkers um kind of that rebel mentality at heart we don't really listen to what people say or think we just kind of do our own thing um and if someone tells us not to do something we're probably going to do it um (laughs) but yeah, I feel like we're pretty grounded. Um, I, I'm a Scorpio rising and a Leo moon, so uh, I'm for me, I'm learning more about my birth chart and just astrology in general. But I think those two things balance me. The Leo is kind of like the outgoing, you know, uh, entertainer side of me, I would say, like on stage or, or when you have to perform and, and kind of be the artist you the Scorpio side is kind of more like mm, the more internal me that I feel like is at times more withdrawn and just kind of the more of the deep thinker that just likes the alone time and kind of sometimes just like in my own head, um, you know, and kind of processing my own thoughts on my own uh, time. So, yeah, I feel like it's, you know, it's a balance, but being a winter baby, I mean, <laughs> Half the time it's like a snowstorm on my birthday, so we're usually in the studio on my birthday, just like hunkered down, you know, in the middle of a snowstorm, get it in. So, uh, and it's usually the Super Bowl close to my birthday, so I'm mad at that. Um, but yeah, it's like Aquarius. I, it's funny because I, I was just like the whole, uh, you know, our art, different artists that are Aquarius. Like, just it's interesting to kind of. There is some similarities, but I also feel like it's it's just a combination of things too, you know, because 
when you were born and how you're raised and all these other things, like, I, I don't feel like it's a sweeping generalization of any sign, but there are commonalities, I feel like, at times. You know, what's your sign? I'm a cancer. Okay. I'm my sin and my moon, I get them mixed up, but it's a Gemini and a Leo. I just can't remember which okay. one, but it's, yeah, those three. Okay. <laughs> but I be chilling though. Oh shoot! Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I be chilling. Yeah, I know a lot of cancer. I got a cancer homies. Yeah, man. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I be chilling. Some stuff they say about my son, it be true. I ain't no crybaby though, but I be emotional sometimes. You know, I just like yeah. caring about everybody. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I ain't got to cry necessarily. He, every time I say cancer, it's like, oh, woo hoo, boo hoo, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, see, no, they're I emotional that. right I there. That. I get that. Yeah, we emotional too. We, we, we're, we're like kind of more collected on the outside, but inside we have all the feelings. But <laughs> people don't always know that because we don't always show it, you know. But it don't mean it ain't there. I feel you. For real. Well, nah. If I'm, you gonna know <laughs> if you if you if you chill me long enough, you gonna know. All right, Tony having a good day. Oh, Tony said, "What happened, dog?" You know. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's cool though. That's cool. I get along. I got a. I got along with Aquarius. It's real cool though. Like, I don't know. It's like me, my me personally, my Aquarius friends. They not like, secretive. They just quiet. They just be chilling. And it's like, shoot, I be chilling too, so we won't be having much conversations, but we be kicking it. Like, we just, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, next question. I'm sorry, Miss. Like, remember what I told you before? I'm sorry. But nah, yeah. Nah, um, nah, you ain't gonna for sure, for sure. My next question for you is what's your favorite color? Your color is blue, for sure. I love blue. Yeah. Has on um, blue always been your favorite color? Pretty much, yeah. I've always been drawn to kind of like blue, purple, like more cooler, calm kind of colors. Um, and I've always loved the ocean. So like blue, I'm a water baby forever and a day. Like yeah, you can't get me out of some water. Anything I can swim in it, I'm up in it. So <laughs> for real, you know. Me too. I like cool colors, blue and purple. I like them too. Um. My next question for you is, do you have a favorite number? Um, I feel like, I mean, growing up, I've always played ball. So growing up, I had two, three for a long time. Of course, MJ, 33 was my, was mine. Three, Allen Iverson, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> you know, I like seven too. To be honest, like I, it's I, I have a, a single called Lucky Number Seven, but some about sevens, and I know that's like a typical like if you're talking about gambling, you're talking about like you know casinos or whatever. But six and seven, six. Obviously, I was born on the six, and I'm from the six, so six is you know is definitely you know Toronto four one six is six four seven. That's our our area code. Um, but yeah. Six, six for sure. Six and seven, you know. And of course, everyone, everyone had an MJ number growing up because you know we all idolized MJ for sure. <laughs> for real, man. That's what's up, man. You said Canada's area code is four one six. Toronto is four one six. Yeah. And Toronto. Like six, six four seven. Where? Two eight nine. But or the original. They ain't giving out four one sixes anymore. I don't think really because it's all it's already kind of taken up. Dang. But four one six, that's where it kind of came from. The six was that it was our area code. That's cool. Hey, Nate, somebody ever interview somebody from Canada? I'm gonna say yeah. Shout out to Toronto. Well, from Toronto, I'm gonna say shout out to Toronto, man. From Canada, man. From the six, man. From the four one six, man. If you ain't got the area code, shoot, I don't know what's wrong with you. Not just when I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> Hey, that's cool though. That's cool. For when I, I learned that, and that, where you get that from, Tony? Who taught you that, Miss Ice the One from Toronto? <laughs> but really, from the islands that don't that y'all not gonna know about, even if you're from Canada, for sure. I got you. I got you, Miss Ice. 
Um, so yeah, Miss Ice the One. My next question for you is I really can't believe I ain't never known Toronto area code. That's where they get their six from, like you said. I ain't know that either. I thought it was just something with the city. I don't know. That's cool though. All right, so <clears throat> how big I don't know. Can I ask you how big of an impact does Drake have on Toronto? Um, I feel like, you know, Drake the weekend like even Tory Lanez and Bieber, like all those, all those people that really kind of blew it up as far as worldwide. Like I, f- I feel like people knew about Toronto because there, there was artists that were successful before that, but not to that type of scale, and not in terms of like hip hop or or um, R and B. Um, you know, before that, it was like Celine Dion, Shania Twain. Like if you didn't listen to that music, you didn't necessarily know who those people were um that did it on that type of success uh but yeah for sure i feel like it's it's open doors in the sense of people just knowing that toronto has a lot of talent and we've always been like an underdog city based on you know being in canada and just and just people not not necessarily giving canada a chance or even just like looking at us in the type of way because they assumed whatever but now it's kind of like you can't really deny the the impact that it's having. And also, I think it's just, it, the more exposure, I feel like the better for artists here because that I feel like was always a barrier in the sense of, you know, the States music wise was always the number one spot and New York growing up was always the spot. So, you know, we always kind of look to them because we couldn't even get a lot of music here. We had to like, finesse mixtapes and finesse all this stuff back when to even get access to it now with the internet it's changed a lot but um i feel like the more artists that get on that level from here the better because it's just oh you know it just it just sets the tone yes ma'am yes ma'am all right so miss ice the one my next question for you is what's your five favorite foods my favorite foods. I mean, I'm Italian, so I love me some lamb. Um, I also love seafood. I love lobster, um, shrimp. You know, definitely. I I mean, I I'm a lover of all foods. I definitely have a a really um, experimental palate as far as I love trying different foods from all different places. Um, especially spicy foods. But yeah, pasta, of course, uh, I cook too. So um, definitely grew up on a lot of like pastas and stews and stuff like that. But yeah, lamb is one of my favorite fish just in general. Um, Anytime I can get some dope seafood. And I know y'all be holding it down down there. (laughs) I'm just stressed because I'm like, we ain't close to no ocean up here in Toronto. So we have a lake, but we ain't got no ocean. So anytime I'm by an ocean, you know, I always think seafood. I'm always like, where's it at? What's popping? <laughs> like, and I love the moms and pop spots that are like low key that like you have to know someone who lives there to know where to go because, you know, all that chain restaurant stuff, I'm not really into that, but like actually home cooked food. I know y'all be hooking that up. What? <laughs> All right, so, um, <clears throat> all right, so here, like, is our some cultures is like <clears throat> during Christmas time, everybody get together and eat. Uh, during December, during November, everybody get together and eat. During uh Thanksgiving, like my family, my grandma house, every Sunday is like Thanksgiving. Mm. Like we eat good all the time. Like, oh man, I'm bad. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> yeah, that's the plug. Boy, Granny's house, that'd be the plug. For real. Mm. But it's like here, it's like we have some places where it's like grandma food, like soul food, like that. But we have some places that's like <laughs> buffet. Like I'm talking about tastes just, I'm talking about tastes real, real good. And it's like they don't have it nowhere else, but they got it down here. So yeah. Man. Um, if you ever come out here, man, let oh, your yeah. boy know. I'm going to arrest you when I pull up for the, for the spots, boy. For real. 
I know y'all ain't playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a get. It's like we don't even. Oh, we don't even brag about it. It's like we don't know. If you if you come out here, you gonna go crazy. <laughs> don't do not wear jeans. You gotta wear jogging pants and hoodies. <laughs> you gonna gain fifteen pounds. <laughs> <laughs> And be just as happy, right? <laughs> yeah. I never want to leave, boy. I was like, mm, for real. Go. If you love food, it's out here. But yeah, um, I don't know. It's cool though. But yeah, um, this ice the one. My next. Oh, we got seafood for days too. You right? We got a lot of seafood. Like, man, it's so common. On, we got seafood, seafood so much, it'd be people on the side of the road in trucks with shrimp on the back or catfish on the back. They just caught it for fun. And they're like, I'm going to go sell this. Dang, that's like my <laughs> dream, yo. <laughs> that's like a- <laughs> for real. There's some places like, well, most of it on the back of a truck, it'd be cold. It'd be like fresh caught. But if you get lucky, they might have their mama or their grandma there with a fryer and stuff. She'll cook it for oh, you on spot. Lord. So it's like it's really like fast food drive through, but it's straight from the <laughs> from your from your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is, man. That's that's the key right there. For yeah, key. but yeah, on um, this ice the one. If you could visit any five countries, what would they be? Um, I would like to visit. Uh, I haven't been to Norway. It's a place I'd like to go. Um, <laughs> I haven't been up those ways at all, uh, like Greenland, Iceland, all those places I would definitely like to check out. Um, I feel like Africa would be really dope, Asia, uh, like Japan, um, uh, you know, definitely I feel like, uh, Thailand, you know, I, I've. I've been to some place, like I've been to Australia, but I never got the chance to skip over to Thailand, which I definitely would love to see. Um, Singapore, and also being a foodie, like I have friends from these places and they're always like, yo, you don't even know what it is. Like just like the food vibes, just live music, you know, also being an artist, like it'd be dope to tour, tour those places as well. Um, Europe, like I've I've done some touring in Europe and I've been around Europe, but there's still places I have I haven't been. Um, Greece, I'd love to go to Greece, uh, and even just uh, islands. I haven't really been to the Caribbean much, to be honest. I've done Cuba and a few other places like that, and Costa Rica was amazing, but uh, Bahamas would be dope. <laughs> You know, even oh, Hawaii, man. honestly, Hawaii, I've, lately I've been seeing friends of mine post from there and I'm just like, wow, like, give me ocean and I'm basically there. Like, how, give me warm temperatures and water I can get into <laughs> and seafood. It's a wrap. For real. That's, <clears throat> that's cool. That's cool. Um, My next question for you is. Okay, when you you say you went on tour, you went and performed in these countries. Yeah. All right. So, what country showed you the most love or the most energy whenever you was performing? I would say, I mean, the states was always cool for sure, but Europe, like the type of love in Europe, man, was really, really humbling. Like Spain, Barcelona, um, was really just how they get down there, man. Like you, we performed at like. 4 a.m. We didn't leave the club till 7 a.m. Like, it's just a whole other level there. Um, you know, Italy Italy was love. You know, I definitely have, want to go back more because my fam is from there. And, you know, I eventually just want to have set up some roots down there. Um, my fam is from the south of Italy. So, yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of love. Even in, um, like, Amsterdam. Amsterdam showed a lot of love uh germany so yeah i just feel like it's just more free up there the vibes and i i feel like there's an appreciation for um just the craft itself you know when it comes down to like lyricism and and just genuine the authenticity of the music itself i just feel like there's a there's a a level of appreciation there that 
um it's just refreshing you know as an artist yes ma'am yes ma'am all right so miss ice the one my next question for you is would you rather go into space or deep sea diving yeah that's a hard one <laughs> um shoot i guess probably if i had to choose i would say sea because i just i love the ocean and i feel like there's so obviously we know there's so much uncovered that we don't even know species and everything but I've like I've been scuba diving before but I feel like I'd love to really do some deep deep diving and just like explore you know I feel like I've always just loved nature in general so I mean space is dope too don't get me wrong but I feel like I don't know just something about the ocean and just the kind of just the peacefulness of it you know it's like that serene the serene vibe and it's, it has that mystery and it's just like yeah you know yes ma'am yes ma'am um what would you like to see underwater shoot i'd love to see like a dolphin i <laughs> see a dolphin underwater I've seen like some some creatures, but I've yet to see a dolphin underwater or or even like a killer whale underwater. You know, I feel like for me, I'm not really one to I don't really go to like aquariums or zoos. Like I, I feel a type of way about animals in captivity and, and held against their will. And I just think it's a really messed up situation. So I don't. I don't want to see animals like that. You know what I mean? I'm just in their natural habitat. Cool. Right. But I ain't for all that captivity. So. Yeah. No, man. <clears throat> I understand. I don't like it either. Like, oh, there's one person I seen. He was from Dubai. He was like a prince or something. And it's like he had. He had some exotic animals. Where they literally stay in his house, like in a mansion. And I mm-hmm. I was looking like man, I would love just to be one. It sound it sound bad, but I would love to be one of his pets. Like he they just be chilling. Like man, he, this dude had a TV as big as like big as the wall. Like, mm. and they just in there laying together, all just chilling. He feed them like, oh man, I don't know. Well, yeah, I get. What you, I really don't like seeing animals in captivity though. But I did see that one. I was like, oh dang must be nice <laughs> but yeah like i don't man i didn't went to some zoos before when i was little and it's like you see some animals they don't even look healthy like yeah man that's what's crazy i oh, don't know it's a lot of it's, stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah it's heartbreaking man something you just see the look in their eyes and it's just like you know absolutely we on the same page i get exactly what you're saying I'm right with you, for real. <laughs> you know? But like, do y'all have a PETA in Canada? Like a like a yeah. like an animal activist group, a major animal activist group. Yeah, we. I think we have a few. I don't remember, recall the exact name or the acronyms of them, but yeah, we do. Um, even just like, I know a lot of them are fighting the whole. Even just like the zoo here and there's marine land for a while and like things where they've passed some laws about not being able to have certain animals uh or mammals in captivity but it's a long way to go because we still have they opened a ripley's uh aquarium in toronto a few years back and then you know but yes they're, they are fighting. It's just, of course, it's an uphill battle. But shout out to everyone fighting for it to free up the animals, man. For real. Up. Yeah. For real. For real. Um, for real. Shout out to all the animal caregivers, man. Y'all. All the activists. Yeah. All the green. All those. All those people. And shout out Sea Shepherds is actually an organization that I came across in San Diego. And they really like really go hard. Like they got their own ships, and they try and help stop just like the mass, uh, you know, 
movement of just everything from dolphins to whaling to whatever and they really be out there like putting their lives on the line so shout out to them too man for real that's a dangerous job what <laughs> for real <laughs> yep <laughs> yep man <clears throat> All right, so yeah, Miss Ice the One. My next question for you is: What are your five favorite? What are your five favorite animals? Favorite animals? I probably say lions. I really like lions. Um, I would say dolphins. I love dolphins for sure. Wolves. Wolves have always really. I don't know. We have wolves here up here, and and where I'm from, and. Just, I really love that whole, I don't know, there's just something really majestic about them and and the whole, you know, wolf pack and it's just, yeah, so wolves, um, besides that, I would say definitely uh, eagles. I love just birds of prey. Eagle, I mean, I got an eagle on my chest too, but eagles and I got birds, like I love Eagles for sure, just just watching them is just like almost hypnotic, you know, it's just something about that, the flying and the freedom and just how they go hard, the way they hunt to watch them hunt. Um, well, I live downtown and I have a, there's a hawk, there's a couple hawks in the park across the street from my house and you see, you can watch them, the way they hunt pigeons and the way they like strategize, it's just like, you're like, wow. <laughs> Know, like they really they really be like strategizing and like really like have a game plan and it's just like um the skill is is and the discipline they'll they'll wait they will wait patiently to the time to to get it in and it is go time and it's like mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah <laughs> um, definitely and I feel like Whales too. Whales. Whales has always been a creature that I've always just been kind of mesmerized by. Like just the sheer size of some of them, like the blue whale and even the killer whale. Like, and the uh, what they be doing. Like, just their migration and everything. Like, life is hard. Like, when you really take it in, like the the missions they have, they be on. Like the migration and just the mating and the beefing over things like you're like dang like you really take it in a lot of species like it ain't no joke thing like they really be like on some fighting for their life every day type of thing like for survival from food <clears throat> to mating to for you real. know it's like jeez like some it's real <laughs> yes ma'am um that's cool that's cool i've never seen hawks eat hunt pigeons before think that it'd be pretty cool to see <laughs> you said like you said and they just you <laughs> for <No>. sure <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up um my next question for you miss ice the one is what are your five favorite drinks i'm talking alcoholic or non-alcoholic or both it could be you can say both you can say whatever for sure um, I love mimosas. You know what I mean? Get that champagne with the OJ. Uh, <laughs> uh, mojitos for sure. Um, I definitely love me some some henny, of course. I got to you know, I'm from the east side. We love some henny. Uh, henny and Alize or Moet and Alize be our thing too. Um. But yeah, other than that, I love coconut water for sure. Get those electrolytes. Um, I I also like lately I've been doing kombucha. Like I've been liking kombucha in the studio just for that little bit of energy too. You know what I'm saying? When you're tired, instead of like drinking coffee or whatever, giving your body something to sustain you a little more. So kombucha's been a vibe recently too. That's cool. That's cool. Um. My next question for you is, I never had kombucha, but I see a lot of people drinking it, and and boba. I haven't had boba either, but <clears throat> that's getting popular too. I need to try those too, but I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> um, 
my next question for you is what okay do you like to go shopping um yeah i feel like for me shopping not more so is just shopping for gear when i have the opportunity to do that um i love vinyl also i'm a vinyl head so digging for records is, is, is like shopping for real. digging for records um and just new gear like i you know whether it's midi controllers or you know speakers and mixers like anytime you can kind of upgrade a setup you know that's really kind of where my mind's at is kind of investing in things that you know what i'm saying uh help increase functionality and and efficiency as far as from like more of a business and branding kind of standpoint you know yes ma'am yes ma'am um my next question for you is what are five stores that you like to go shopping at here to be honest the main um music store we have is is along mcquade um which is like you know audio uh engineering gear at the same time of course there's always going to be a part of me that loves me some some jays so <laughs> Flight Club for that. Um, and just like, I love the old throwback uh, gear. So like Mitchell and Ness, I love like the, the ball jerseys, the throwback football jerseys and jackets. Um, and just, I really feel like it's important to support local brands, especially our homies, like doing their thing, clothing lines. So like Legends League is a, is a line we have here. Raised by Wolves is another dope uh, company. So even like in videos or photo shoots, I really try and like, you know, promote people that I believe in from my city who are really trying to pave the way with their with their clothes and, and you know, whatnot, because it's like, we're all in this together. So, you know, and why, why not? Like, if you have the opportunity to do so, we're both on a hustle. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Why not, why not give each other that shout out and, you know, support. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. I messed up. I went wearing this shirt the whole time. I ain't even say nothing about oh, it. Yeah, shout it out. Yeah, <laughs> Miss Dog. Oh, man. Miss Goldie Shots, a.k.a. Miss Gold Focus Productions. Wait, she's the owner of Comante Clothing. That's where this came from. It got Comante right here. Y'all can't see it because my camera don't like it. But, yeah, man, this, man, don't worry about how I look. But, man, this shirt right here feels so good, man. Like she said, it's cause she from up north and I'm from down south, and we don't have clothing that we don't need clothing that keep us warm. This keep you warm. I don't care about that, but it just feels so soft, man. This is soft. Dope. <laughs> that's <laughs> what it is. It feels good. That's really good. real. That's yeah. it. So yeah, man, I had to give a shout out to Miss Miss Goldie Shots for the shirt, man. I've been wearing the whole time. I'm so sorry I waited this long. I forgot, dog. I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, <Shout> out. <laughs> for real, Miss. Ice the one. My next question for you is, what are your plans for the next five years? And what are your plans for the next 10 years? <laughs> God willing, you know what I'm saying? But for real. Um, really just continuing to put out, you know, uh, quality content and music. Um, you know, when this COVID stuff wraps up, definitely get back to touring. Um, Places I've never been, and just you know, connecting with fan bases around the world. Um, and yeah, I feel like, like I was saying before, just getting back to some of my roots back home in Italy and in the East Coast. Uh, but also just really trying to you know build. I feel like you know, with my people, my squad, and just the fam, and really just trying to build, build our empire, build our brand. You know what I mean? So we can be in a, in a comfortable place in the sense of just having, you know, all the resources we need to do um, to make all the visions and uh, we have, you know, a reality. So, um, and be able to, to help our own communities and bring up, you know, the our artists under us and, and creatives in our city and just really continue to, to rep, you know, put, put the East Side on the map and just, 
Yeah, I feel like just continue to evolve the craft and the music itself. I feel like it's exciting in the sense of the the music, the way that you know we're evolving our own sound over time, and just you know, steel sharpens steel. And I feel like the more we all you know hone in on our our skills and strengths, and you know that ten thousand hours, like that's real. So just. I'm just excited to see kind of where that's going to take us over these next few years. Um, so yeah, and just, you know, going outside the box with it, I definitely want to do some more acoustic, um, acoustic vibes as well, just like strip down um, records and music and collaborating with different musicians as well, just as, you know, especially with this album and moving forward, as, you know, more and more instrumentation, live instrumentation on on the records. Um, and even for me as a writer, just, just continuing to to kind of evolve my pen um, and storytelling as a as a narrator. So yeah, man, God willing, you know what I'm for saying? Real. Like <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I hope you get every one of your goals accomplished, Miss Ice. Um, <laughs> my next question for you is, what is your message to the women of the future? Yeah, I would just say, you know, just just be yourself, man. Like, and I know that may sound redundant or or <laughs> like it's been said, but that's the that's the truth. I feel like. You know, so oftentimes, especially in this business of, of music and the industry, you feel this pressure or labels or even management, you know, they, they want to see a version of you or they want to see certain things in the box of what they feel like, um, you know, a woman should be like, look like, act like, um, even for, you know, whatever it is, queer, trans, non-binary, like, do you, like, it's, if there's anything I know is like staying true to yourself, you know, is the most important because you, you're you, you know what I'm saying? And if you're doing something that you love, if you're doing music or whatever your craft is, if you're doing what you love or whatever your hustle is, you know, stay true to that, stay true to what, what makes you happy. And, and I feel like lifting each other up. So oftentimes I feel like, you know, patriarchy itself and the way the system of you know hierarchy and misogyny is set up a lot of times we're pinned against each other are made to just beef with each other over petty shit that crabs in a bucket kind of mentality and it's just like to kind of like step back from that and kind of look at the bigger picture and, and how we can work together and even for me like working together with um you know producers women producers you know what female producers, whatever it is, non-binary, queer, like everything. Like, it's just like, honestly, it's like living your, living in your truth, you know, because at the end of the day, you're the only person that has to look at yourself in the mirror when you wake up. So, you know, and everyone's different, like whatever your vibe is, whatever, whatever you want to do, it's just like, no one can really tell you, tell you who to be or what to be. And I know a lot of times there's, there is pressure and, and we put that on each other, like that parallel violence happens and, and you know, the ways in which we oppress each other. And, and I get it because so much of it comes from, from what we see represented to us in the media, you know, in, in popular culture. And it's just like to move away from that and just make our own definitions of what that looks like, you know, and just coming from a place of love and understanding and compassion, you know, I feel is, is really vital in it all. Yes, ma'am. I agree. You, you ain't say nothing wrong. Everything you said was spot on. That was a great answer, Miss Ice. Um, <laughs> my next question for you, Miss Ice, the one <clears throat> is, okay. Okay. Are there any other shout outs that we left out uh, from earlier? I would just say shout out to everyone that's been supporting the new music and um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a bunch of people pre-ordered the single for this Friday for FYF. Um, so shout out to y'all, man, like just supporting the new, the new, the new vibes and, and, you know, inspiring me to, to keep grinding and hustling, you know, because it's like, 
I know a lot of times, you know, music music is can be healing and therapeutic, and not only when you're creating it, but people listening to it and taking it in. Yes, you know, ma'am. Yes, times ma'am. In my life, and I'm sure you can agree. Times in your life where you heard an album or you heard a song, and then you were like, "Wow!" Like it really impacted you at that time, or you really needed to hear it at that time to like get through it, or you know, just even escape from it. So. You know, I'm honored to even be that for some people and and to have the opportunity to do that. You know, I'm just grateful. Uh, You were giving absolutely fantastic answers, Miss Ice the One. I agree with everything you just said, for sure. Um, (laughs) That's a great interview. Um, My next question for you is, okay, what would you like people to know about you before they go to your social medias? before they listen to your music um i would just say you know the music is is always coming from from the heart from a genuine place and and it's like i feel like you know like all of us we have so many dynamics to our character and our personality so to me that's kind of i feel like represented in my music you know every song is kind of a diff could be a different vibe or about a different subject or but it's always it's all it's always a vibe for sure. Either way, it's like I feel like with music, you can kind of tell, you can feel for when it's 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 coming from someone's personal experience or it's just coming from, you know, an an authentic um, spot, you know, in their spirit, in their soul, and and I feel like that resonates across any genre of music that you listen to. That you're kind of drawn to that. Um, and it shows, I think it translates in the music without even really having to say anything. So, yeah. And I mean, it's all love. I hope people enjoy it, share it, and just, you know, yeah, it's, it's a mutual appreciation for sure. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> after this, if you would like some other people to do interviews with, I can send you some interviewers. I have a couple who, spe- well, I have two that specialize in music, artists. But I have some other people who are doing interviews as well. So, hey, anyway, I can help you out, let me know. Like, your whole team, yeah, yeah. I'm here to help y'all out um, any way I can. Um, <clears throat> my next question for you, Miss Ice, the one is, how do you feel women are represented in the world? Ah, so that's, that's a tough one. I feel like that's a, you know, an intersectional answer. But I feel like there's a lot of big things happening um like we have a long way to go still as far as you know just our own our own uh rights and our own um fight for equality and everything um but we're you know we're chipping away at it shout out you know all the activists and i've been an activist my whole life as well just like you know pushing for for a lot of different you know quality and and having a voice you know not being silenced and you know uh, feeling empowered and I think I think a lot of that's coming I'm seeing it happening and I'm seeing a lot of you know women just really bossing up owning their own businesses you know companies like really stepping into stepping into their visions and their goals and their dreams and it's inspiring. I feel like the more we inspire each other and and can connect and and you know work together and kind of build ideas and and strategies and I I think it's a good thing. Like I feel like it's 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 a long road, obviously, but, but you know I think I think we're on a I think we're on a good path. And just everything I'm seeing lately is you know I feel like it's a, there's a lot of positive things happening. So. You know, amongst all the all the bad, there's also a lot of 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 really just really inspiring things. So, shout out to y'all! Like, shout out to y'all! You know, really putting on, and even in music too. You know, I feel like um, just the way the nature of of music itself, and now, you know, you don't have to have a label, and there's a lot of independent artists doing really big things, and especially women, and you know trans non-binary folk er- everyone queer it's just like to see the mix and the diversity of people making their own definitions of what 
music is or even genres like shout out because you know it's like yeah there's something to be said with the old shit but no it's it's just like there's always has to be room for change there always has to be room for evolution um and a deeper understanding so i feel like the more that we can push those those boxes and step out of those you know those norms and those expectations then the better you know yes ma'am yes ma'am um, Miss Ice, the one. My next question for you is: What do you think needs to be changed for women to be treated equally? <laughs> that's that's a long that's a long ass answer, but <laughs> um, I think the more I think the more opportunities that that you know women can have, the more that they can step up to the plate because, you know, it wasn't too long ago women couldn't even vote. Women couldn't, you know what I mean? Like there's there's a history of of oppression that of women have had to overcome just like a lot of other people, races, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's it's an up it's an uphill battle and I it's obviously still ongoing for a lot of whether it's gender or race or, you know, I feel like it's always gonna be an ongoing fight, but again, I think it just goes back to being true to yourself and, and, you know, having those boundaries, whether it's in your craft or however you're moving, like just setting those standards, having those boundaries. And when people don't respect them to deal with it accordingly. And I know it's hard because, you know, we're blessed to live in a first world country and we have a lot of things that we take for granted as far as being able to speak our minds and you know move certain ways and the freedoms that we have here but i think recognizing that we have to lift each other up too you know it's 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 just because you know some of us have so, whatever it is it's like women died before us so we could have the lives we have now and we could have the voices we have now and you know, there's there's still people paying the price for that every day. So I think to be mindful of that is important. Um, and ways that we can give back. And you know, um, I just set the tone in our own lives. You know, so yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Miss I still want my last question for you is what would you do if you were the president <laughs> oh well in canada y'all have prime is there called prime minister? I'm a prime minister yeah what would you do if you were the prime minister man uh, <laughs> i feel like the whole system needs to be taken just completely scrapped and revamped from the bottom i think it's just like sexism or or racism or homophobia, all these things. Like, I feel like you know, so oftentimes these systems in place, uh, they don't they don't work, and they haven't worked since the conception of them. So, including the justice system and all these systems that, you know, were based on oppression and and colonization. I just don't. I feel like it's like putting a band aid on a on a giant wound. Like it's not. It's not gonna really, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I think we need to squash a lot of it and revamp the whole thing and start from scratch because it's unfortunate because it still happens all the time. You know, the justice system oftentimes does not serve justice, and you see that reflected in prison prison populations. You see it reflected in just in the world. You know, in general, the greed, the you know, we talk about COVID, but just as many people die from hunger, way more people die from hunger every single day or diseases or not having clean water, basic human rights that, that people in our own country don't even have. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying before, like there's, you know. Um, before you were talking about the indigenous people. Yeah, that don't have clean drinking water in our own country. So to this day, and it's 2021. So it's like before I want to hear no talks about whatever the government has to say until like we can't even take care of our own people whose land we're on in the first place. So 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Until that could happen, I don't trust nothing, and I don't want to hear no talks because it's like, you know what it is. And you see that reflected in so many countries, first world countries. You see the way that the original people of the land are, are treated and disregarded and just disrespected. And so how can we start from a place that's already so flawed? It's just, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, I feel like it, the whole thing needs to be squashed and and just revamped from a holistic place, you know? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, you got my vote, man. It's Ice the One, 2024 Prime Minister. <laughs> They ain't ready for all this, boy. This shit will be on its back. This whole shit will be turned up, boy. They ain't ready for this smoke. For real, <laughs> straight up. Hey, they ain't gonna be ready. Gotta get ready. Hey, if they stay ready, they ain't gotta get ready. That's they fault. For real. <laughs> All right, so Miss Ice the One, I would like to tell you thank you so much for coming on my show and giving me some all your time today, y'all. Let me tell y'all, man, I messed up about three, four, six, seven, eight, nine times, and she still stuck out with me the whole interview. And I want to tell you, I appreciate it from my doggone internet going out to me being unprofessional, getting doggone people had to come do stuff, and yeah, she still stuck here. So Miss Ice, man, I want to tell you thank you so much. Um, is there anything that I I left out or anything that we didn't talk about that you would like to say uh no man i mean shout out to you first and foremost for having the platform and and you know putting us on and 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 having these conversations man it's important and it's appreciated um and besides that yeah like uh, you can find me ice the one on all platforms you know what i'm saying i-c-e-t-h-a-o-n-e -E. um so yeah website ice the one.com and then I saw one on all platforms, aka the East Side General. You know what it is. We out here, and yeah, um, new music always coming out. So you know what it is. Yes, and man. Tony, shout out, big <laughs> shout out to you, man, for sure. For sure, man. Shout out, Miss Ice the One, East Side General, dog. Uh, Ice the One, <laughs> Ice the One, Ice the One. If you don't know, you gonna know. <laughs> that part <laughs> <laughs>